Good evening, everyone. Got a few more people joining. We'll give it a couple more minutes. Great to see so many people jumping on a tasting this close to Christmas. We weren't sure what the uptake would be, but it's uh, yeah, great to see everyone keen to, to try some new whiskey um, from, I think, one of the coolest upcoming new distilleries in Australia. But we'll get into that very shortly. Leo, thank you for your guests. Uh, Emma, do you, is he close? Uh, oh, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't pick it this time. <laughs> Normally yeah. I pick the tasting orders. and. Well, I... You're one off. Uh, mm, possibly. All right. If you have a camera, it's always great to turn it on just so we can see your faces, your reactions. So many regulars. It's awesome to see you on. John, Des, Tom, Paul. Who else we got here? Alana, Travis, Jeff, Leo, Brett, Dave, Matt, Michael, Ian and Karen. Good to see you guys. Who else have I missed? Atle, good to see you, mate. Uh, Cool. Well, I think that's enough to get us started. Everyone else, I don't know, it's a, the week before Christmas. Christmas parties, family stuff, last minute shopping, all, all the fun, crazy stuff going on at the moment. But there we go, a few more people join. Good evening, Tim and Jared. If you got cameras, turn it on. Always good to see your faces. I think let's kick it off. Everyone can hear me. Thumbs up. I'm assuming. Dave, where to go? We can we can hear you too. Can you hear me too? That's good. great. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Let me officially hit the start button. That's all good. All right. Whiskey's in front of me. Ready to go. Good evening, everyone. My name is Oliver, and welcome to our very last virtual tasting of 2022. This has been a crazy year, uh, but a fun one. And thankfully, um, we, we got to the end. I have not done the, the maths. I, we've done dozens of tastings. I think we, we average like three a week, um, some public, some corporate, some, some, yeah, I think David's even done a hens party this year. So you know, we, we keep ourselves busy with these uh, virtual tastings and in-person ones as well. But yeah, please uh, welcome everyone to the room. You guys have been amazing. I just wanted to say thank you uh, from, from all of us at TWL for especially the ones who uh, joined so many of our tastings throughout the year. It's um, really great to see so many regulars and, and we've, yeah, I think lined up possibly the very best to last, uh, I'd like to say. Uh, our regulars, um, I've invited them on tonight just because they, they like being part of the show, but we obviously got the, the lovely Emma Cookson and David Ligoff as well, who our sort of guest hosts. Um, I'm running the show today. I figured why not? Um, Emma's kit's still in the mails, but she has some other manly tasting uh, whiskeys down around there, including our wonderful Sangiovese cast. So she'll jump in as appropriate, but otherwise, uh, yeah, and David can just poke the bear as, as usual. But our wonderful guest tonight, we're, we're here to talk about Manly Spirits, their whiskey label called Coastal Stone. It's a single malt whiskey made in the heart of Manly. We'll, we'll jump into the story in a minute, but I just wanted to, yeah, wonderful warm welcome to David Whittiger, founder and CEO. Welcome, mate. Thanks, Oliver. And thanks, everybody, for spending, what is this, a Tuesday night in the, one of the busiest weeks of the year to, to listen to what I've got to say and to taste some of our whiskey so thank you very much so as introduction yes um you may know us for kind of this logo here manly spirits so manly spirits um has been around now for nearly five and a half years um you know we've been making uh whiskey while we've make, been making all our gin so the day we started back in 2017 middle of 2017 we fired up our stills and um we, we started laying down about a barrel a day so we've been making whiskey for a long time and, and I can tell you all about that in a, a little while, but uh, I've been kind of patting the barrels and every so often, you know, wandering out at night or not not generally in the start of the day and uh, tasting them and seeing how they're all going. But um, 
it's been wonderful that uh you know sort of five kind of five years in that you know we've got some whiskies out we launched um under a different brand it's still made by manly spirits so it's called coastal stone um maybe i should just reflect upon you know where coastal stone came from but before we jump in show let's all pour the, oh, yeah. the yeah sorry the the lineup because i've jumped a little bit uh, ahead obviously the new make spirit um the clear one is what we're going to start off with so pour that in your glass and then if you've got five whiskey glasses in front of you the, the lineup tonight is number one, the, the new make, number two, the Nor'easter, the Shiraz cask, the Sangiovese, uh, no, so the Monty, Monty, you can never pronounce that oh, one. Luciano. Yeah, that one, that's number four. And we are then going to finish on the Sangiovese at the end. Um, so it helps if you're Italian. It does. Oh, I, I am Polish and, and all we know is um, pork and, and potatoes. So, and ah. cabbage. So, no, okay. no. Um, yeah. one of those. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, t- tell us about the, the new make while we're, we're drinking it and, and let's get into the. Yeah, I guess this is where it all starts. So, yeah, we started making this stuff in 2017. So, uh, yeah, Coastal Stone Whiskey um, grained glass. So, um, you know, we've got a brew house. We, we make our wash. We start with Australian. Uh, malted barley um, you know we do the normal thing we mash it we use um, some couple of yeast we use an ale yeast and a distiller's yeast so we do all that ourselves we stress the yeast a bit um, so we um, ferment kind of warm not hot but a warm temperature and we hold it flat we don't let it rise at the end I don't know how many geeky people there are but I'll just say these things <laughs> we kind of hold them at, at 28 degrees the whole way through and we kind of underpitch the yeast. So what it does is it, we think it stresses the yeast a little bit, makes it a bit harder. And so they make a few more congeners or I, I guess I, if you're not familiar with what I mean by congeners, but the things that are the flavor molecules in something like malt whiskey. You know, we all, we've got the alcohol, but without that, it's vodka, right? So the yeast also makes all these under, what, under, other wonderful, beautiful molecules, which are going to later turn into gorgeous whiskey. So we like looking after that. Um, yeah, so that's a big part of what we do. Um, we're located in just north of uh, Manly at Brookvale, near lots of breweries. So we talk to it, you know, we talk to the brewers and how they kind of do their art. Making whiskey is different. There's a lot of similarities, but there's a fair, fair bit of difference too. Um, you know, we don't want to leave any sugars behind. It's totally wasted. We want it to be all converted into alcohol um they want to kind of leave it around for mouthfeel but so part we've kind of got a a lot of help from local brewers there's four pines bucky dad and days lots of them seven day if you ever come to brookie it's good for a pub crawl well a brewery crawl a distillery crawl and there's a zero alcohol little distillery there too because in the complex where your cellar door is and, and the little bar there is um four pines is like two second walk right yeah, Four Pines is right behind us, but uh, within the three or four hundred meters, there's you know, kind of six places to go to. So it's um, Burger at the Truck Bar. Somebody says there from LT, is it? Yeah, Arty, Artley. Didn't quite see that, but yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, then we double pot still. So I'm I'm, I'm not gonna you know we've got two copper pot stills which um I designed that well I designed I nicked the. I copied stuff from Scotland mainly. Um, so what's different about Coastal Stone Whiskey made by Manly Spirits is our stills are bespoke and made by us. Not made physically, but designed by us. So they're designed um, to essentially... Now, have a sip, right? Have a sip of this to make this stuff and to make it taste like this. Do we, do we all no. know how, how whiskey is made and why oh, it comes off really? clear? Um, thumb hand up or or anything if anyone's needs a quick 30 second intro to to whiskey i can do it really quickly if we like i'll do it incredibly quickly yeah go for it so um basically we make beer first we call it wash okay it's about seven or eight percent alcohol it's pretty sour you wouldn't want to drink it but it makes great whiskey right it's got all these wonderful flavor molecules we then put it through i don't know if Ooh, ooh, that's a bit. Ooh, that's you, got your, you got your um, background yeah, filter oh, on. Well, whatever. Pot stills. So they're like kettles. Um, and we boil you boil it once. 
um, and basically all the alcohol boils off and it turns from a you know a beer type color to a very clear liquid. So when you distill, if you're distilling properly, it should be clear. If you're distilling badly, it's all murky because you puke the still, you, you know, it's foamed over. So it should be clear. Um, but when you, if one distillation, it's pretty rough, right? It's called low wines and it's, you know, got some pretty bad bottom end to it and it's a bit coppery and, you know, you go, oh, yeah, I'm not sure you'd actually drink the low wines. I wouldn't anyway. So then we put it through a second still, the spirit still, and that's where I guess all the finesse takes place. And we do the heads, hearts, and tails. And I won't go right into it, but you know, the hearts is the stuff we keep. Um, we recycle the heads and the tails back into the still. Um, and that's where we're kind of selecting the heart of the spirit, which is what's going to go into a barrel. That's that's my quickest one minute of of whiskey. No, I love that. It's Can great. More of that? <laughs> one thing we do, do differently though, in this this one is because I'm a chemical engineer, I cannot get out of my head that if we're putting the heads and the tails or the fours and the faints back in the still every time what's going to happen to them because you just re you re so um what we do to avoid kind of those those things building up and then pushing through to the hearts is we purge uh the four shots so the stuff first two or three liters that comes off the still in the spirit run we remove it from the system um we end up using it for something else which will be a nice rare dram one day but we just take it out of the run. So we're kind of purging. We're removing some of those contaminants. I don't know, maybe, you know, some of the things we don't want to build up to a high level. Um, so that's contributes to the, to the flavor of this. It's sweet, malty, light, it's estuary. You've got the green apple, things like that. Um, uh, the, and the stills are nice and tall. So they get lots of reflux. They've got upward sloping line arms. So there must be a few geeky people's here, people here so that anything that condenses in the lime and falls back into the still. I kind of say, I'd put it that the new make is a little bit between Irish three times to still and Scottish two times to still, if you like. My analogy would be it's kind of in, in between. So there's a big um, massive powerhouse distillery that um, is used mostly for blending in Johnny Walker called um, Maltlock. And they're 2.3 times Emma from memory, 2.5. I think more like 2.7. 2.7 yeah, or 2.8. 2.7. I'd, I'd love to know how they calculate that. That's fantastic. But well, who, who, who discovered it in the first place? Because they've been doing it forever. Well, I think Ben Rennes does a similarly bizarre number of distillations that's like a point something. Well, the, like yeah, the point something, I mean, you know, the Scots talk about this all the time. Like, I'm some, sorry, you guys all know Scottish whiskey better than I can, but like Glen Fitty, if you've got really tall stills, you're getting kind of loads of reflux and it's moving to the 2.2, to, I don't know, 2.3, 2.4. Whereas if you've got a big fat short still, then it might be 1.9 or, you know, and that's very meaty and raw spirit. So kind of it's done classically through kind of that aspect ratio of the stills. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and that is a big part. You said it once. And that's it, kind of, you know, you build it. So that's, you know, the way we did that, they're quite tall. The spirit still has got a boil on it. Anyway, I probably should stop talking about that stuff. Um, and we I, was, this. Yeah. I was going to ask, what, what do people at home think about the new make? Mm, I'd like some comments, please. So what, what ABV does it come off the still? Off the still, the hearts is typically about 73, 73, 74. Um, then and we, we've we've bottled this down at at sixty. So you've added 60. a bit of water. I'll tell you a little bit about, about that in the moment. So it's the distillery's choice as to what percentage you put in the barrel. Okay, so it comes off at seventy three ish. That's too high to go into a barrel. So we then break it down with some water to, you know, barreling strength. So the stuff you've got sixty. That's what we've moved to, and I can talk a bit about that as we go through the whiskies. Um, it is a choice. The Scots do it at 63 and a half. I know Starwood now being um, having a long time in the wine cask, they've they've dropped it all the way to 55, I understand. So um, um it depends what barrel you're using, you know, what your climate is and, and what your what your maturation conditions are like. But that you're tasting is 60. 
I'll, I'll get to this uh, question of um, ABVs because depending where, where you are in Australia, it can go up or down in the barrel as well. You can add lose water, add water. Uh, but some comments coming in. So Travis says um, sweet and fruity, but still quite chewy. So that, that's for the new make. Um, Tom has says always surprised when something at 60 plus percent ABV is so easy to drink. So there, there you go. And Leo uh, with um, Dr. Google, thank you, is 2.81 times uh, Motlock. Oh, so. Yeah. We, we all got that wrong. Good on you, Leah. Yeah, Thank I mean, you, you need the the spirit to be a che bit chewy as well. I mean, the chewy is kind of those heavier alcohols and, oh, goodness. Um, anyway, I won't get all chemical, but all those those heavier things, they give that oiliness as such. Um, but you need all that. You need those, I call them congeners, like the, the other flavours, the other molecules, to, to react with, you know, barrel and oak and kind of lignans and all that to make complex whiskey. Anyone, anything else I should talk about with a new make? I, I think, I think, yep. Look, it, it's easy to drink. It's approachable. You you get, I think, the character. Uh, I've tried quite a few different new makes from Aussie distilleries and each one is slightly different. Um, I like that this has a nice buttery feel for me. That That's, um, and I've, I've, yeah, we, we've known each other for years. You've, you've always had this from day one. So it's, I think it's yeah. part of your, your manly spirits character, which is awesome to see for, for many years continue through. Yeah. Yeah, we've um, left the new make quality the, the same. We haven't touched it, actually. Apart from our trials in the first two or three months, we've just kind of dialed it in because we, we'll talk about this now, right? We want a great spirit, which is light, malty, fruity, you know, two, two and a half, whatever times distilled, um, that reacts well in cask and matures well. So we dialed that one in. And then the fun from, from then, and that's what we're going to launch into in a second, is then is then matching it to casks and seeing how you know, the spirit behaves in different casks, um, and it's and you know and it can go in all sorts of different directions depending on the cask. But um, we'll talk well, about that. I think that's a perfect segue. So everyone, um, grab whiskey number two. Um, I'll just paste the tasting order as well. So it's called Nor'easter. Um, before, yeah, drink it, try it, throw in your comments. Um, there's obviously two parts, uh, you know, who started the Manly Distillery. You got yourself, uh, you were in the petroleum oil refinery industry uh, in a previous life. Uh, your, your, your better half, Vanessa, she's the, the brains, the designer, um, the branding expert, the, the storyteller. Um, where did this entire operation come about? Did you guys always have the plans to do a distillery? Like, did you wake up one day? Why, why Manly Spirits? Like, how... How do you guys come up with such a cool, you know, brand and, and whiskey? Oh, goodness gracious. I think our brains exploded is the main answer to that, Ollie. It's like, <laughs> we were sailing along. I don't know if there's any corporate people here, but it's kind of nice when you get paid every month, like the, the, the gets direct debited into your account and you get a bonus at, you know, once a year. So I, I had all that stuff. I was working for Caltex. It was a good job, you know, professional engineer. Um, Vanessa, um, she had her own, she's a, a branding design and marketing background. So she had her own design business. Um, we did the Tassie thing and we were down with friends in 2015 and we going to Mona and we dropped into the Cascade Brewery, which haven't been since, but that's a, that's a pretty cool place to, you know, one of the oldest breweries in Australia and did the tour. And we just dropped into what was the Redlands distillery. I don't know if you know your Tassie whiskey, but um, we dropped into that and um, just tasted oh, a bit of stuff. Old Kempton. Old okay. Kempton? Yeah, yeah. rebranded. Before they moved back there, that's right. Um, and I don't know what happened, but I just had this this sudden thought, Why? because I'm an engineer, so I can kind of make things and scale up things. I'm a project manager, if you like. And Vanessa's got a creative branding. She can, she can create beautiful packaging and she can lead us in the right direction to be consistent to a theme of brand, which is really important. Um, we just, for some reason, decided to quit all that stuff and go into, into Australian spirits, mainly driven by what you've seen happening now. Look, when we started, there were between 30 distilleries. Now there's, I don't know, 300, Three, 350. Like it's gone through the roof and that's fantastic. Um, but even now, if you pick whiskey, how much Australian whiskey is drunk in Australia, we drink so much scotch, right? So there's still a huge potential that's yet unleashed, I believe, 
for, for um, Australian distilleries to produce quality whiskey that rivals what's available from overseas, be they bourbons if you're into them or the, or the Scottish stuff or in many international whiskies. But there, it is a huge ta- challenge for, you know, like maybe Aussie wine was like 30 years ago. I'm not old enough to remember that, but my parents talk about it and, and they can remember when there was like Lieb for Wine and Blue Nun. There wasn't, we weren't wine snobs, we are now. So um, we, we saw that there's a huge potential for, for Australia to become a great spirit producer and we wanted to be part of that. Um, it's also a bit of passion. I've got Scottish um, mum and, and Vanessa's a yachty. She loves gin. So kind of like, you know, it's also something you love. You like drinking as well. So if it's what you like, you're passionate about it, you've got the skills to do it and you think it's a good time to do it, business. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love you. You've ticked all the boxes. Um, you just reminded me, and maybe we'll. There's, there's not. Hopefully, there's maybe one or two drink, gin, gin, drink, gin drinkers on the call here. Uh, you've recently petered a gin in a, a Scottish peat, right? Yeah, we did. Yes. Um, I mean that's a passion play. Vanessa, if she's here, say the what she calls it a total waste of time. But I, I'm, I really, I really love it. Um, we had a collaboration with a guy that owns a little island off Isla. Um, it, it looks at Jura, if you know all that stuff. It's off um, Campbelltown um, in that western part of Scotland. Um, so he just dropped in and said, look, uh, um, I've got a botanist mate who's collected all these botanicals um, from the island. Uh, he lives in Sydney, by the way. Can we do something together? So um, we basically did um cut a long story short it's pretty tricky getting through customs but we wanted to kind of have a link to whiskey and to scotland so we you know we took some peated malt and put that in the vapor basket of the still and it's got a nice gentle smoke finish you know it's kind of a crazy gin it's one that's not meant to be commercial It's, it's supposed to tell a story about, you know, the Scottish, um, you know, Scotland, well, the UK is surrounded by water. It's islands. It's an island nation. So are we, you know, whiskey, Scottish gin is, is English, you know, UK as well. So it was a passion play and um, fun to do. I just love the fact that um, there's, there's various definitions of um, spirit innovation in Australia. I think that is a perfect example of it heading in the right direction and pushing boundaries. We're not going to go into the the, the questionable ones. Um, but back to the whiskey because um back to the whiskey. So this is the Nor'easter guys. So coastal stone. Coastal stone by the way is so Sydney, uh, the Australian coast, sandstone. So the theme of the packaging design, the bottle has an is dimpled like an eroding sandstone cliff. So like whiskey just takes time to mature. So we're, you know, we're using the analogy of, of an eroding, eroding stone to explain kind of you need time to kind of turn it from a new make into a beautiful, matured golden whiskey. Um, anyway, that's Coastal Stone. Um, right, the, the um, Nor'easter. So this is our, God forbid, $100 whiskey. Okay, so... Um, it's gone into some shops now, which is fantastic, but we wanted to do one which is a hundred bucks. Okay. Um, we've got plenty of others that are gonna be more than that, but um, you know, we 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 we're striving to get to a price point that's accessible, okay. Um, particularly in kind of the mass retail. Um, but we have plenty of other ones like you're gonna taste later, which are very special. But the Nor'easter, okay. All right, I should talk about wine casts maybe because it's the theme of all these and I'll talk about bourbon casts. Right. You, okay. you obviously work with all the casks. So you've got we work with all the casks. You've yeah. got sherry, you've got bourbon, you've got a bunch of ex-wines. We've got mostly ex-wines in our lineup tonight. Um, yeah. But th- this is a blend of a few different casks. Yeah. It's four, four casks. So to kind of answer you quick, that segue really, we've been filling, yes, okay, ex we started with ex-bourbon, actually, you know, Kentucky, whatever. That's the classical Scottish whiskey cask, right? Um, we pretty much got first fills. The Scots would be using second, third, fourth fills. Um, so ours, even our bourbon casks are quite vanilla and, and full on. 
because we haven't got the second Phil cast. But but yeah, definitely I love like that. We all love that flavor that comes from an American oak bourbon cast. So we fill loads of those ones. Um, Australia, okay. Um, sustainability, kind of availability. So we're a massive wine uh, making country. So we we believe, and that's what we're doing, that we need to make the wine a wine cask work, okay? Because I mean, what happens if um, the Americans change the law overnight and they're allowed to use second fill? Uh, they're allowed to use their barrels again for bourbon. They could change it in a heartbeat. I reckon they could, um, because environmentally maybe there's not much American oak or anyway. Um, I mean the. Sorry, I'm probably preaching here, but I mean, availability of barrels has led the direction of whiskey amongst other things. So wine, because it's available, because we've got such a wonderful wine industry, we want to and are incorporating that into our whiskey. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. And I love the fact that um, we're not trying in Australia, I think, to, to copy the Scotch industry or the Japanese or the Irish or even the American, we, we want to put our own stamp on it here. And, you know, thanks to producers like you, you, you actually get to lead the direction and, and help shape that. It's a tough, it is a tough one. Um, and wine casts you got to do correctly. So there's a lot of work to do, I think on getting them right. So the Northeast is maybe, let me explain what we did here. So this isn't a wine cask or a bourbon cask. It's both. So it's a it's about sixty percent wine, um, an American oak um, Barossa kind of winery, um, big Shiraz, um, big five. Would you believe big five hundred liter and three hundred liter casks? So um, because the spirit we is a nice fine sweet thing, we don't want to have big tiny bomb casks which just put an oak oak and flavor tea bag in. Okay, so um, um, and that's to try and balance the the oak and the spirit. So big casts, so it's got those wine casts, but it's also got a fair whack about thirty percent of first fill ex bourbon. So that gives it that sweetness, that that vanilla, and I think it gives it a beautiful mouth feel. The bourbon, um, or ex American oak, or American oak so far. Um, then a bit of sinister sauce. If you remember Milton the Monster, sorry, I'm getting a bit old. Um, French oak? French oak, right. So as Oliver alluded to, rather than we've filled a variety of different casks, one of them was toasted phoenix, which means they were wine casks that have been routed out inside and made almost virgin French oak again. So uh, French oak casks have been just toasted, not charred. So we've so this has got five percent of that luscious kind of French oak character. Um, I love it. I, I love the the addition of French oak. You'll be very careful with it. Um, I reckon if, you guys might know better than me, but I reckon why sherry sometimes liked is there's a there's French oak floating around as well. But um, so it's got about five, and because. Uh, Distillery manager, the next winemaker, he used to make wine for Robert Oatley. So I couldn't stop him. He put in 5% wet wine, which is, means it wasn't charred. It was just the wine was poured out and uh, the whiskey was put in. So it's got a little element of that out of a punch and out of a 500 litre. I just want to say like most Australian distilleries, I think they just put the liquid in a cask they wait the two years three years if you're lucky and then they just decant it sometimes cast strength sometimes water it down somewhere between 43 and 46 percent on average and they say good luck to you and you know well most of the time it works um, but not every single single cast in the world is going to be perfect I think and we've had a few distillers on this year um, preaching um, and, and, and I think the more I taste it, the more I think it's, it's a challenge. Blending is very hard to get right and that consistency from batch to batch and for a $99 Aussie whiskey um, in a fantastic, very cool bottle that has a sandstone cork, uh, you, you missed that bit at the top. I did. Sorry. Thanks. Um, it, it's so easy to, to drink and it's 46%. Like you, you haven't even, um, yeah, watered it down even further, which I, I think yeah. it's a winner Thanks. just um, in that $99, $100 category. There's a few Aussies now playing in that space. And this, this is at least my favorite um, in that category. 
Yeah, it's it's designed to be drinkable. Um, you know, the, and we write, you know, that it's got, you know, it's got a fair bit of vanilla and chocolate, but the stone fruit in the front as well. It's it's you know, it's got some lineiness, which is nice. It's you know, it's got a little finish, it's got a nose, it's got a nice luscious mouthfeel. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of tasting notes we can read, but I'm pretty proud of it. And um, and uh, we, oh, last thing I'll say about it, it's a vintage. What do I mean by that? We recognise that our whiskey will change slightly as the years go by, as the average age of the barrel increases, as the even as a wine cask changes. So um, every year we'll change the the date on it. This is the 2022 vintage here, um, and we're you know so we'll put a year on it to and um, we'll see how it slowly modifies its direction as time goes on. I, I think that going wildly one direction or another i'm hoping you're keeping a few of each year and then in in five years time we can do a lineup of just the vintages and see the, the change yeah. over time yep Getting, um, i was just oh. going to read out some comments so um i asked everyone um what they think of the nor'easter so travis says beautiful nose stone fruits uh sultanas vanilla slice and icing sugar much the same on the palate plum shortbread and sultanas nice emma it says bread and butter pudding on the palate. There's that butter coming through. Yeah. Uh, Atlee says um, it didn't last long enough, and Paul says dangerously drinkable. So good. Thanks, guys. You guys should do our tasting notes too, because I'm reading here: creamy texture, almost custard up, custard apple strudel, panna cotta, roundness, pear notes. Anyway, so that's good. You guys know what you're talking about, um, and thanks for. But I, yeah, I'm pretty proud of it actually. I I think it's great. Um, but but the the you hit a nail on the head for us, and it clicked with me about six months ago that it's the blending of casks. There's what we're going to be all about. We've got to lay down the right casks, but it's then deciding which ones. You can fill gaps. It's like a how do I explain this? It's um if you take a single cask, it's hard. It, it, it might be great on the nose and weak in the palate, great in the finish, but it can be perfect. It can. But, you know, not all of them are. But what you can do is with multiple casts, you can kind of fill different gaps and increase something and lengthen or do the opposite, dial it down. So that's why I like blending. There's often. a reason. Marrying, marrying. Blending is a bad word. Sorry, guys. Shouldn't use it. Vanessa kills me when I use that one. Marrying casts together. Yeah. Majority, like, what is it? 80% of the world's whiskey is blended whiskey that is drunk, consumed. Yeah. Like, it. it there's a reason Johnny Walker still sells it and and it's popular it's it's never going to go away and i think that there is definitely an art to it um travis just added uh, i love the vintage concept i was quite disappointed when glenn ruff has uh stopped doing it so you can you can take that that part of oh, the shelf from him it. okay right well i and think you should just move... a question on the uh, yes. your, okay. on your, your process um have you got a panel is there a team that uh, that ends up with that right those right ratios the 60s the fives and um, is it democratic to who, who has a casting vote? It, it's pretty democratic. Um, you've got to have uh, the craftsman first, if you know what I mean. So um, who who put a, a set of options together. So Dave Richards, our distillery manager, who's the ex-winemaker I talked about, and myself kind of lead the general direction of putting them together. But we put a lot of variance and you can have you know, 40, 60, you know, all sorts of around a theme, right? Then we use just our, our people who know spirits well. Um, and we get the opinion of everybody and we get a direction. And it's kind of like you got to, you're, bat, you're batting towards an answer, if, if you like. Um, so, yeah, we it's democratic in terms of selecting the final um, composition. But, you know, still, we, we make the call in the end. Dave... I mean, I'd probably make the calls. That's why that's why I rudely put myself on there as the master distiller, which is a bit rude, but I kind of do. You know, I, I make the calls in the end. Final calls with me, but I've got this great guy now um, who helps dramatically, which is Dave, in terms of getting it to the right direction. Answer your question? Good. Thanks. Yeah. I, just, I just love the knife sharpener on the end of the, the corks. Knife sharpener? The yeah, the, so that's what Dave's holding up there is real Sydney sandstone. Um, 
And, so, and every bottle, even the $99 bottle, it's got yeah. the Sandstone. If you get to meet Vanessa, my beautiful wife, um, she said, oh, my God, it's we're going to make it like a Sydney kind of coastal thing. You've got to put Sandstone. I said, that's impossible. Can't be done. Never say that to her. Never say. Um, I mean, just dollars-wise, would you believe this little baby here costs $5? I mean, it's ridiculous, right? <laughs> or $6, actually. But... You know, we'll probably work out how to do it in a more economic manner, but it's true. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a real stone. It's beautiful. It's different. So your that's... your bottle design actually won a world whiskey award last it year. It did. It won best, it won best, best but world bottle, best bottle in the world, in the world whiskey awards. It's contemporary, right? So there's a lot of bottles that look like a still with a little kind of, you know, it's a bit, so. Um, this is a contemporary design and it's meant to be you know, a bit discombobulating if you want to use that word, a bit different. Um, you know, we're looking, we're doing a, we're putting together a 700 mil version of this at the moment. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll have a bigger bottle as well, uh, a bit taller, or a bit, bit fatter and taller, a bit like, it looks like a Hibiki bottle kind of. There you go. You're getting a lot of nods in the room. So um, there, there's a little insight for you guys here at first. This is why we do these tastings, always get a bit of insight. Let's jump to whiskey number three, the Shiraz cask. All right. Also at, at 46%. Yeah, so we this is part, if any of you guys bought any of our element series, which we launched essentially a year ago, we did um, bourbon port, uh, sherry, pinot, and Shiraz. So this is one of those. These we filled in our first month of operation in about June 2017. They're, these are 100 litre, 100 litre, so smaller casts, not what we normally do. These are smaller ones. They're shaved and recharred by the Taz Cooperage guys. A bit, I call it Tazzy style, if you like. Whether that's fair, that's just what I call it. Um, but this is just a single cast. So this is, if you want to isolate Shiraz, here's a nice, so the last one was 60% of that. This is 100%, smaller cask. Um, anyway, have a little sip. We're already getting some comments uh, from Leo. Buttery nose on the nose, notes on the nose, sorry. Dried tobacco. Palette is dry with shortbread. That buttery spirit does shine through. You can see this is a backbone, not exactly this, but how it forms the backbone of that nor'easter that you had. Strangely, as the wine casts go, the Shiraz made a more delicate spirit. It was bizarre. Like we've, if you, you may not have changed, we haven't got Pinot on the list tonight, but Pinot, um, when we put it in, that is really luscious and kind of full of character. Um, but the Shiraz is kind of more balanced. So um, anyway, uh, I actually, of the five of them, this wasn't everyone's opinion, but I love, I like this one because I thought it was, kind of balanced and had nice length. It was just an easy drinking type of um, whiskey. But there you go. I, 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 I was waiting uh, the classical Shiraz note uh, from Mika, um, black pepper. Black pepper. Yeah, I think that's what we write. What do we write here? Light and delicate with a cracked black pepper heat, sweet caramel and blackberry, lie underneath warm spices of cinnamon, pepper and nutmeg. Yep. What um, else we got here? Atlee says Pinot is amazing. So got some fans there. Um, and Dave says uh, getting some licorice on the finish. That's pretty cool. Licorice. Okay. Nice. What, what do we think? Thumbs up for, or, or down or, or so so? Yeah. Getting thumbs up. There you go. Majority. That's good. You're going to, are you going to ask these guys to vote in? I'll pick their dram at the end. Or... Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll yep. do a poll at the end. I'd just like to get a bit of a sense uh, as we go. But what I like, what I like about tonight, I'm kind of showing you a little bit how we construct. I've got some mozzies here. I'm just, I must have the door open on the island. Um, um, but that you, you tasted the nor'easter, which has got a blend. But this is this is the big backbone of it, all right? The Shiraz. Uh, we got a question. Uh, which batch is this Shiraz? Is this two or three? This is batch one. We've only done one batch of it. Yeah. The element series. The only one we've reprised. Well, sorry, that's not quite true. Bourbon and um, um, sherry, we did a few at the time, uh, two or three. 
but the Shiraz, the Port and the Pinot, we only did one and this is still batch one. We have, we're about to release batch two of Pinot. So it's the only one that I happened to choose back in 2017 to buy more barrels for. So we filled about 20 back then. So we've, um, we've got another couple of thousand of batch two of Pinot, kind of a year older, which is being released shortly. That's cool. Good to, to hear you got some backup stock. Yeah. I mean, was there any, any wine type that you find doesn't quite work with your spirit or require a lot more delicate maintenance or management? That's a good question. I'm not, I'm not sure, Dave, I'm experienced enough to say that. Pinot is fascinating. When I tasted it for the first two or three years, I thought, oh, my God, what have I done? Because I took a punt to buy a lot more of those. I just thought it was different than not a lot of Pinot, so I just went different. So um, it's it's harder to work with, but then it suddenly hits this point where where the funky. I thought I said it just tasted funky. I can't even explain the notes it had for years, um, but then it just mellowed right out. Um, so it's it's tricky to work with. Um, the two we're going to do last. Um, maybe I'll start to talk about those. So we've got Montepulciano and and uh, sorry Sangiovese. Uh, we've done another one called and. Sorry, any Italians here? Have we got one? Uh, Angliacano is the best. Ang is the best I can say it. Emma is Greek, so you know half Italian. <laughs> That's hardly Most Italian. Angliaco. Angliaco. Say it again. Angliaco. Angliaco. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> um, so these are two. We're going to release um, these three ourselves uh, next year. We're going to call them the Italian series. These are kind of more limited, rarer whiskies. Um, we're gonna, um, so there will be the third. Anglia, sorry, you said it, Emma. You said it, oh, anyway. Um, these are from a Griffith winery called Minnow & Co. The dude um, just dropped in one night at the distillery and said, I'm a winemaker. And he, I said, oh, can I buy some of your barrels? He said, I make these light Italian reds. Um, so I thought that's different. Like these are, you know, unusual type varietals. Um, so we filled, I think it's about 10 hogsheads. A hogshead's a 300 litre cast. Um, I think these are about four years old from memory. Um, and they've been sitting in the distillery right at the top of our stacks of all our barrels. So you'll get to answer some of your questions. I don't, I can't, I'd, I'd be lying, Dave, to, to, to give you a definitive answer, only that they're all quite different. I don't know which are the best yet. Um, Shiraz seems to work well. Um, and you, let's just let's hold our thoughts and see what these light Italian reds are like. Well, let's try whiskey number four, the TWL exclusive. It's also, as of right now, until you release the next one, the oldest uh, whiskey from Manly Spirits Coastal Stone at four years old. So you, you want to do the Sangiovese, the Sangiovese next? Yeah, we'll do the Sangiovese. Yep. And, okay. Uh, 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 you sure? Know. No, I'm, I'm going to overrule you because this is what we talked about earlier. Oh, uh, fine. We'll, we'll yes. do the Monty. Sorry. Let's Sorry. do the Montepulciano first, and then we'll finish on the, the Sangiovese because it's right. it's a finished whiskey. So the Montepulciano, has everyone got some? Right. Oof, be careful, guys. So this is cast strength. We all got some. Um, it's about 63.1. ABV. So we've given you this one. This is not a finished whiskey. This is still a work in progress. It's just drawn straight from the cask. Um, it's a big 300 litre job and it had that wine in it, as I talked about. Oh, by the way, uh, these got charred by a dude in South Australia called Andrew Young. I don't know if anyone's knows their Coopers. Then, you know, he's, he kind of does small small stuff, but he took them. We sent them to him. He charred them and he sent them to us. So it's got Andrew Young's charring occurring in the, that means anything to anyone. He's quite well renowned. I think he's yeah. been in Fiji helping set up um, cooperages in, in their distillery industry now recently. So he's getting around and yeah. A lot he's of um, nice guy. So this is, this is a, a, you know, I, I wouldn't bottle it like this, but. The idea is that you guys can have a sip of it at car strength. Then I'd advise you, if you haven't got some water, spend a minute and go and get a little bit of water 
and while I'm waffling on and um, put a little bit of water into it after you've had a sip. Um, all right, let's, let's have a little sip. As we're drinking it, um, I alluded to it before, does your ABV go up over time or, or down in your, in your bonded warehouses? Well, um, ooh, this has got some really interesting flavors, isn't it? Um, it goes up. So, um, which is why we're slowly dropping our barrel infill ABV. You know, I said we're 60 now, you tasted 60. Because because we're typically dry and hot in Australia, we lose um, water over alcohol out of our barrels generally. Um, so this rose, I think we filled this at about 59 because I, I like to, I like to, I, I do a lower ABV for wine cast, by the way, always have a lower versus bourbon. We fill them at a lower ABV, um, but it's, it rose probably a percent a year about. So what did, uh, what did my wonderful ex winemaker say? He's, he's called a boysenberry white pepper milk chocolate, but, um, hmm. So Travis here, unusual no, uh, nose on this one, on the Monty. I'm getting blackberry jubes, lemon, and a hint of salt and vinegar chips. That's, that's mm -hmm. very cool. Salt and vinegar chips, I like it. And then um, on the palate, slightly sweet and chewy, those jubes again, stewed plums and cherry ripe. Where'd my water go? Emma, uh, Travis is taking away all your lolly references. I know, <laughs> I know. Well, I've got a... Got to, uh, you know, refresh my palate of all the American uh, candies are, that are out there. <laughs> but yeah, no, absolutely. And like, I love lollies as a reference for whiskey because it's like, it, it always, I love sugar. So for me, it's always a happy thing when I get lollies off of a, off of whiskey. I think we tried the, this Montepulciano um, when we were picking our cask, didn't we? You did, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we write sour cherry, boysenberry, black fruits, meaty, game red meat. You know, these are some of the notes that we're getting on the palate. Yeah. Um, you know, finish rich and slight drying tannins, chocolate custard cream, tobacco leaf. So I've just stuck a bit of water in to see what it's like. So we, we're getting a bit of a debate. Um, Leo that's says, debate. Don't, don't, don't water it down. It's awesome at cast mm. strength. Brett says, happy to drink it as is. Oh, nice. Anthony says a couple drops of water. Anthony, I'm I'm in agreement with you. I've added a couple drops, not much, maybe two, like actual drops, not not pours. And the sweetness comes through, and the heat, I think, um, just just goes away a little bit more, and there's a bit more complexity. I'm, I don't know if it's at sixty percent now or fifty eight. It it just yeah, I think yeah. that improves. One of the to to Dave the Goff's question actually. Um, deciding on there's cast selection, but there's also ABV selection, right? Because you know, within once you've got your kind of your whiskey, you know what what strength do you bottle it at? There's no book that tells you you have to do it at 40, 46, 52, 58, 51. So um, um, I like the what's his name? Oh God, what's his name from Tasmania? Oh God, I've forgotten his name off the top of my head. Lark. No, Belgrove. Peter, big knock. Big, big big I like his style of determining. What he does is he breaks it. He, he does one at, I don't know, 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, 56. And he leaves it there for all his, all the people in the dis distillery to taste. And the one that's gone down the most is the one he goes for. He's a character if you've ever met him. I haven't seen him in years. Um, but more seriously, you know, you do have to select that ABV. And when it's a more single cast, then that's a, you do need to kind of break it down and decide on that balance of where it's, where it's perfect to sit. When we, we obviously went to the distillery when September, October, I can't remember now, to, to, to try different casts for this bottling, the, the, the last one that we're about to taste. And we what, spent almost three hours there, like half the time was just arguing on ABV. <laughs> Like we, we knew which whiskey we wanted and then it was like, yeah, that, that was the fun part. So the San Gervaisi cast, which we'll talk about next, which we've done the exclusive bottling for you for the whiskey list, um, 
we went with what you desired. I know even internally, hmm, looking at Emma here, um, you had some, you know, some wanted it lower and some wanted it higher. But the one thing you can do, though, is you can always add some water. You can't take it out, I suppose. Yeah, it was, I, I remember it being like, I, I love that when we went to try them, you had it at like natural cast strength and then a more like approachable, I think it was like 48% fish or something around there. And so it kind of gave us a scope of how how it drinks higher and how it drinks lower. And then, yeah, I think from there, we, we wheedled down the cask one to, to really pick. But yeah, I, I, I recall a, a full 20 minute conversation with Larry. Yeah. Like, no 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 we've got to get it around this ABV. <laughs> we can't yeah. let it go too much lower so <laughs> you can do it. people think uh, interestingly the one my last one comment i'd like to, i'm not sure if there's anyone here who can kind of give me feedback but um when you first break a cast down like when you add water like you're adding some drops um and that's when we do that when we break it down to bottle it it does change it takes some time to settle down like we do it quickly when you add some drops, but for us as whiskey producers, I've discovered that you need to break it down and let it sit for some time because that that rearranging of the water and the alcohol molecules, whatever it is, I don't know what the chemistry is. It it it, it just it takes time to settle down and mellow. So um, um, that's what I'm learning, and I'm finding even in bottle, our stuff that's six months old in a bottle has kind of settled right down as well. Just an anecdote from me so far. A lot of Aussie distillers, at least the ones I've um, had experience over the last few years, they will let it just sit in a steel container, stainless steel drum for four to eight weeks um, before bottling it, yeah. um, just to let it mellow, obviously to deflock it as well, depending on the ABV and, and that sort of fun stuff. Yeah. But yeah, the, most of the time it's just to let it, I don't know, react with oxygen and, and, and get itself right now, if you bottle it straight away it can be different to the day you tasted it out of the cask and yeah you, like that's not what we you know that, then you know that, that's i think part of the process it is part of the process yeah um we we tend to uh, just on that subject we do something similar we break them down and leave them for a couple of months you mentioned flocking if anyone kind of caught that um some of the um, particularly as you go down lower in ABV, some of the heavier oils, what are they, fatty acids and things like that, they um, they precipitate out or flock. You know, they form a precipitate and it falls to the bottom. Our sherry cast was full of it. Pinot, full of it. Um, Dave wants to do what Overeem is doing and doing flock shots. We've got all this flocked kind of stuff. What the hell are we going to do with it? So um, it's full of flavour. So we will probably release a bit of a rare dram on on those ones some sometime. But um, yeah, we don't chill filter by the way. So non chill filters is one of our things. That that means that you'll see some haze in the bottle, guys. The nor'easter, for example. If you look at the bottle closely, you'll see fine floaties in there. You'll see stuff precipitating out. That's flavour, guys. That's that's yummy stuff. Um, so it's part of the flavor profile being we, we haven't chilled it down and knocked them all out, which is what chilled filtering is. But um, I think that's leaping flavor in. We, we, uh, we're kind of half the brains behind the, the other flock shots, but maybe we next year oh, we do oh, a, yeah. well, it's always been a whiskey lovers, uh, our Facebook group, uh, an exclusive and we've done three batches. I didn't know that. Sorry. I should have known that. Yeah. No, all good. But now that you've mentioned you're going to do it, maybe we do a yep. side by side next year. If um. Yep lines yep. up with timings it's normally emma's like freaking out already too much whiskey Maybe butter start like a whole series of going to distilleries and we just get do a whole tasting of just flock just flock yeah, yeah. i mean it's tasty what, stuff what it's the yeah. is going on what the you flock know? is going on we should call it <laughs> a brand called what the flock is going on yeah, yeah. that we we had um a naming competition for best pun i uh, won a bottle and it it got messy and hilarious and i'm not going to repeat it now but Whiskey Ooh. number five, the the Sangiovese cast. So as I alluded to before, but I, I got the order wrong. This is the oldest single malt whiskey ever released from Manly Spirits. Uh, we I didn't realize it was dark. Was it? No worries. Uh, while, whilst he's turning the lights on. Yeah, we we went there, Emma, myself. Um, David, hmm. you, you didn't turn up that day. You, you were, where were you? I was there. Oh, David L. Yeah. <laughs> 
You were in Scotland or somewhere. I probably didn't get invited. <laughs> no, you, you were in Scotland. Um, Larry and our team joined as well, and our newest employee, Scott, um, as well. So, uh, And then, yeah, we had the Manly Spirits team. So between the panel, I think there were seven of us. Um, we went through um, your, your oldest stock, which was wonderful. Thank, thankfully, um, you, you pulled out your best whiskeys and, and said, look, this is all really good stuff. And, and we, we, we picked this one... Um, purely on flavor and it just worked yeah. um and and we yeah got it at 58.5 um i think we just brought it down by a couple points so i think it was just under 60 from memory uh so still big cast strength whiskey but i think yeah, it's, it's a big, um, yeah it is yeah yeah it, it gives um, it a, a longer finish um and, and and for me that creaminess that we mentioned right through your character really shines through um there's other elements that are going on in other flavors but yeah. yeah, I just wanted to highlight um this for at least for us when we tried it was the best single cask on the day that just shined manly spirits, I think, in yeah. a bottle. Yeah, and so happy that we've put in a bottle for you guys. Um but we kind of what do we say? Clementine, cinnamon, pastry. It's let's face it, the one you just tasted, the Montepulciano, it's the same size cask, it's the same oak, it's the same winery. It's a slight, but it's a different wine varietal. They're both, you know, kind of light Italian reds, but, you know, this is just showing the subtle changes you get holding all those other things constant and changing the wine varietal. Yeah, I remember when we were tasting this, we were like, right, we're going to pick this for like a Christmas dram or whatever. And you know, everyone in the comments is talking about that sweetness. I get those those red skin lollies. But I remember when we were drinking this, I think at cast strength, and I was like, it just tastes so pink, like pink and red. And I know that colors don't have a flavor. Pink and red. Yeah, but it, it reminds me of, um, you know, the poinsettia flowers that everybody has for right. Christmas, especially it's a big thing in Texas. Like oh. everybody has poinsettia flowers for Christmas. Um, and it, the like the smell and the taste reminds me of poinsettia. I was like, this has to poinsettia. be our okay. Yeah, I no, saw those, someone that yeah okay poinsettia. yeah with like big um the big red leaves. They're just so bright. Yeah. Yep, it is. I've just got to watch my battery here. I'll get Vanessa to go and get me a charger in a second. Um. Anyway, yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. Um. You know, it's a big full full on whiskey, but it's not. What I love about it is it's got a lot of balance. It's got a huge amount of flavor, but it isn't kind of overpowered by oak or 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 too much wine character. It's a big wine cask. It's a a 300 liter, if you know what they're like. They're monstrous. Um, so, you know, as a number of you have been saying, the spirits um, is allowed to shine through, which is what I love. Um, the wine being a light wine doesn't overpower. Um yeah. All, all three casts that you showed us on the day to, to really try and, and pick one, like I think I mentioned it and I'm happy to repeat it. We would have grabbed all three, like they were that good. This one, I think the, and, and Travis just put in the comment, the finish just doesn't quit. I think the the other two, the, the heat, they just need a little bit more time in the cask and we needed a whiskey to bottle, you know, within a, a couple of months. And, and that was the reason yeah. Like we, you know, it just turned four on the first of November. I think you bottled it on the third from memory. And 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 we were like, this is awesome. And then the other two are awesome, but they just need that extra little bit of time. And and whiskey's ready when it's ready. And it felt like a crime to 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 pull it out of the cask too early because it could get better. Yeah. So yeah. you got a work in progress on the Monty just now. That's awesomeness to come. This is awesomeness yeah. ready to, right now, to be yeah. bottled now. So that's yeah. I, I don't want to compete the two. I think they're just two great drams in time. Yeah, yeah. One's, one's where it's ready now. That was our main point, I think, why we picked it. And you've you've got 100 bottles. So we did 100 bottles for you guys, which is amazing. And we haven't, they're the only ones that exist at the moment. Exactly. Um, uh, who's Leo? Sorry, I was just seeing, some, I was seeing a question pop up. Do we completely fill the large castle, leave an air gap? Um, we tend to completely fill. I did do a set of trials um, with Pinot Cuss, actually, where I did like 90% fill and all this sort of stuff. What I've discovered is that we have such a high angel share that there's no need to leave an air gap. 
they go <laughs> straight away. You fill the cask and it goes, <laughs> and you've got like that height before you even start. Um, just from it sort of soaking into the oak, um, and then just due to our hot kind of conditions, so um, we don't need to do that. I think an air gap's important for maturation, but it just blooming happens by itself by evaporation. Thanks for the question. Yeah, great question. And, and Atlee just asked, uh, he's in, where's the link? So I've just shared it. So we, we've got a little special for everyone running, uh, joining the tasting tonight. So it's automatically added at checkout. But yeah, there's um, not many bottles of uh, this 100 litre. That's 100, it. Yeah. yeah. Once it's gone, it's gone, never to be repeated. And and then we'll we'll be chasing the next single cast yep. from, from Manly. Yep. Um, going down, sorry, up the comments again. Oh, great. There's been a bunch of it. Sultana's yum. Palette is very creamy. Cherry plum jam, Sultana's cramble. Salted butter. Travis, I like that one. Very jammy buttered shortbread on the finish. Sweetness as red skins. That's an Emma comment. Emma gets a sweetie reference in. Well done. Rhubar, rhubarb and custard. Very Christmassy. I, I didn't think of it when we were bottling it or picking it, but this is a Christmassy dram. You may not have been, but I was. <laughs> I was, yeah. When we were tasting the three side by side, I was like, this is the one that most like says Christmas to me. And I, I don't know if that's like that American cold winter Christmas or if it's that like, you could definitely drink this on a beach. <laughs> it right in, but yeah, I, I think it's, um, yeah, it's, it's probably one of my, my favorite ones. And I love, you guys do a lot of other wine varieties as well. I think I spoke to one of the guys and they said that you've got a Viognier white wine cask as well. Yeah, we just, well, we just filled, we, we, we're kind of wanting to fill a lot more. We just filled um, a load of Chard ex Chardonnay casks from WA. Uh, I mean, Dave, our winemaker, oh my God, he's, he's frothing about filling wine casks. So um, we, we did, we, we need to do a lot more as well. And I think you'll get different expressions from the different, wines and different regions um we feel by the way we feel a lot of fortifieds too but i think fortifieds are so hard to get hold of these days but we will we do have you know a pair of sherries coming along we've got you know port tawnies coming along muskets paul, things like that paul asked do you have any rum casks on the on the way uh not yet actually paul um i'm talking to the bricks guys if you know your rum they're the guys that make rum in uh, over surrey hills kind of area Kind of doing a starting a barrel swap. Haven't done that yet. Can't do everything. We'll give it a go. When when because um we we got a work in progress sample um when was it September twenty first two thousand and twenty one we we had you guys on for the first virtual tasting. Uh, mm -hmm. you had a ginger cask sample. Yeah, this they're about three. You would have had it about two years old there. Um. It there was an equal favourite on the night. I remember people were frothing for it. Yeah, they were saying we should bottle up now. I remember them, what those guys were saying. <clears throat> but yeah, they're still kicking along. We've got three 300-litre casts. They're X. Um, what did we get? Oh, yeah, that's right. They were Starwood casts that Four Pines Brewery put their ginger beer in, barrel-aged it for a while. <laughs> Excuse me. And then we put our spirit in. So they'll pop out at some time for sure. <laughs> which is great. Oh, that's so great. that's the San Gervaisi cast, um, the pièce de résistance of the whiskies tonight. So please um, tell your friends, buy a bottle, enjoy. What, shall I run the poll? Always exciting to, to see what the results <laughs> yes, are. Okay. All right. Just just so you know, um, as as co-hosts, we can see the results, but I will share the results for everyone at the end once voting is done. So I'll give it a few minutes. I I took the Sangiovese cast to a few mates recently and they love their scotch, a few of them into their bourbons. They particularly don't like their Aussie red wine. I, I just, yeah, I think they've had some okay to, to mediocre responses and I didn't tell them what this was. I said, just try this, try it blind. And yeah, it, it threw so many people off and everyone was nodding. It was like, what is this? And and some people, you know, said, you know, is it a Cavalan, you know, being from 
Taiwan, like where, where, where is this from? And, and, and people were throwing off. And, you know, when I said it's a New South Wales distillery, they were like, it's, you know, they, they started going through the, the rounds of some of the others they know. And I said, no. And then I, I mentioned what it was at the end. I showed them and they were like mind blown. And they said, this is the best Aussie red wine cast they've ever oh, had. Yeah. And, and it changed their perception, um, oh. which to me, I think it's like, Australian whiskey is so young, like we, we just yeah. hit 30 years, we are, um, no. yeah. but that that's been mostly Tasmanian whiskey. Yes. There's been Bakery Hill on the mainland, but so yeah. many others are, are fairly new. You've only just re released a four-year-old. Don't judge Aussie whiskey from what you had two years ago. Cause in the last 18 months, the last six months, we've had an explosion of Aussie whiskey, but mostly red wine cast, but all the others have come out and it's, so diverse now and there's so many good stuff um and then this is an example of something really cool i just want to hear the highlight that fact um yep yep yeah give it give it a go yep yeah i think bigger casts um we've, we've chosen american oak by the way um for our wine cast i think it just you know nice the nice sweet vanillas from the american oak uh help um, although i did say we use the french for the nor'easter but i think and the, and i think the larger cask the level of char. I was talking to an, another distiller today. Um, you know, kind of, we Aussie distills have tend to over char, crocodile char their cast. I don't think it quite needs it. We've got to learn how to make our cast more subtle in a way. <coughs> Excuse me. To kind of balance the spirit with the oak. But um, that's that's the task. Yeah. All right. Well, how's the poll going? I might uh, call it quits in case there's a few people just sort of lingering in the background. Um, <laughs> cool results. Um, mm. I forgot nice. to say it was multiple choice um, in oh, case that it changes change anyone's vote. So we, we always say vote the, the top one and two whiskeys of the night. You could obviously vote for all five, um, just, right. just pick two. Uh, always good. Might give it 10 more seconds and then I will close it. <coughs> Sense of place. Like you, you've designed an epic bottle. It feels like you're you're on the you know the sandstone coast um, of, of Sydney. Um, if you clicked on the link, I actually um, that photo is taken on the new Barangaroo uh, headlands there with all the sandstone near the Harbour Bridge. It, it's my favourite place to take bottle pictures. Uh, I'm not a photographer, but you put a whiskey there with that backdrop, and magic happens. So in this bottle, I was so excited because it's like designed for that sandstone. So uh, I yeah, I, I just yeah. Part of me just always wanted to do a manly spirits bottle because I wanted to take a photo of that location that you know had our bottle on it. So, tick, I, I'm really happy we've we've done it. But more importantly, it tastes awesome. Um, and and we never pick whiskey that's average or mediocre. It's it's always going to have to pass our very stringent um tasting panel. Um, you know, David Emma, everyone's involved. So, yeah, um, I'm so glad to see people enjoying it. Wrong side of the bridge. Uh, look, uh, we're we're not north or south. It's all right. I lived in Maroubra for many years, mate. When I met Vanessa, she lured me to the north side. I'm from Melbourne originally, so I don't have no affiliation. It's all right. All right, David Ligoff, do you want to give us a little drum roll? <laughs> Is he on mute? No. You know, you know, how much people pay me for my drum rolls, Oli. <laughs> <laughs> A premium. <laughs> Just share the poll. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> surprise, surprise, the uh, New Make did not get a single vote. Well, it's not whiskey, though, is it? I mean, seriously, it's a oh, New Make. No, might be <laughs> people out there who are keen. <laughs> yeah. It makes a killer cocktail. You, you did release um, a white dog, which what would have been 46%. Yeah, we did that early. We, um, we triple matured and did an incredibly narrow cut early on. It was a that was just a starter thing. We did that for the first couple of years, but um, it's never you know you're not supposed to drink new make. So I'm glad people didn't choose our new make over our matured whiskey. That would be a bit strange. So that's good. <laughs> Nor'easter, thirty nine percent. The Shiraz, thirty three. The nice. Monty, twenty eight. I think um yeah, hopefully that. You know, my, my comments, it needs a little bit more time in the cask, I think, and it's going to be mm -hmm. sensational and, and great to see our, our whiskey shining. I'm, I'm glad. Thank you for um, pulling me in line and, and getting the order right. It's okay. And to Chris, I think you asked, is there more sherry cask on the way? There is. Um, we've, we've filled a, quite a few 
like 230 litre and some 300 litre Australian Apera or Sherry. So um, they're maturing away and they will pop out at some stage. Um, we've also filled some second fill ex Tasmanian 100 litre cars. It's important, some Sherry. So not, it's kind of limited, limited number of those. So I think we, we're aiming to release some sherry port or maybe even a blend maybe even a sherry port kind of combination um the second half of next year as well just limited releases and and they're from previous tassie whiskey mostly discovery. we might we might use some some um you know large format as well we'll get to be seen but um we'll see we haven't we haven't kind of gone through the all the work on those yet but um there is some fortified that's you know cl close to being ready they'll pop out too yeah awesome well that that's it in terms of the the formal tastings um is there any other questions uh dave you got a couple more minutes if required yes sure um um good night have a wonderful christmas happy new year's thanks for all your support uh if anyone's going to drop off now you've all been legends chat to you all very soon um i might just take off the mute um because sometimes it's a bit more Allow participants to unmute themselves. Here we go. Zoom is terrible. To, to change settings, you have to mute everyone to unmute themselves. So, um, But yeah, if anyone has a question or any feedback, um, jump in. I'm pretty casual now. I'll, just, I'll stop the recording as well. But um, yeah, thanks from all of us. Yeah, thank, at home. Yeah, thanks David. everyone for listening. I've said lots of words, but hopefully they've been reasonable <laughs> and explain the whiskeys. So. I love we'll, talking about that there. We'll see uh, Manly Spirits uh, next year. Plenty of tastings. Uh, hopefully another cast. I'd love to do another one of you guys soon. And at the Whiskey Show as well, I believe. Yep. Of course. Yep. Okay. Right. Thanks, guys. I'll Thank jump you. in quickly before everyone else does. Um,